In the world of retail analytics, there are infinite possibilities. What can be done on customer data, product data, transaction data, etc. Today, we are going to take a retail data and I am going to walk you through how to think about it. And obviously, we will do a huge case together. But most important, how we can make a sense out of the retail data and reach to some conclusion. Let's do that step by step. So guys, what we are going to understand is, first of all, how to view the retail data. Okay. So after finance, retail is one of the most important industry for analytics, AI and machine learning. Okay. So we will understand how to view the retail data. After that, we will understand how to derive the metric from data. So obviously, you will not use data in the raw format. You will want to derive some metrics. So how to think about that and how to derive it. Then we will see how to pass those metrics through machine learning. So basically, we will do a machine learning use case and try to see how to go through that. Then we will do the Python hands-on as I told. And then I'm going to leave you with some conclusion on how to work with the retail data. Okay. So first of all, what data I'm talking about here. So I'm going to show about show to you one data here. This is the data basically. And this is the transaction data basically invoice you see and stock code you see. And then there is description of the product quantity sold invoice date. What is the price customer ID country? Okay, this, this is your data basically. So what it tells one row tells about one invoice. Okay, so what level this data is basically one product actually. So for example, this in this invoice, right? Ending 365, right? There are these many products sold. Okay, so this product is sold, then this product is sold and this like that. Okay, so multiple invoices data you have in front of you. Now, this is a very simple data about some online gift uh, company, it seems. So all these looks like a gift, white metal lantern, white hangle, uh, hanging heart, tea, tea light holder, all these things. Okay. So what we have to understand is how to first of all view this from machine learning point of view and how to think about this data. Okay. So at the moment you see any retail data, you should start thinking in three different directions. Okay. So I'm just telling you based on my experience in industry so far, start thinking on three different directions. One is customer. Okay. One is customer. Another is product. Okay. And third is transactions. Okay. So in these three directions, there are n number of possibilities of doing the machine learning use cases. Okay. So let's come here and try to think what use cases we can do. So one use case we can do is basically customer segmentation because this is a customer level data. We have customer level records, so we can do the segmentation. Okay. So I will go to this customer. I will see the uh, different behavioral aspects of the customer and I will do the segmentation. Can you think something about product level data? What you can do in product uh, level or in terms of analytics, what you can think here? For example, in this invoice, right? There are these many products going. Similarly, in this particular invoice ending with 66, right? In this particular invoice, there are these two products going. Okay, and so on and so forth. Okay, so one huge case that comes to my mind is association analysis or market basket analysis. Okay, from the product point of view. Now, if I ask you, can you do something from transactions point of view? Can you do something from thinking about? Um, I will look at all these as one one transaction, one one invoice. Then what can I do? Okay, so one thing that comes to my mind immediately is we can do something known as anomaly detection. Okay, so I'm I'm highlighting three things here. I will just write it here so that it's very clear to you. In customer side, right? I can do something known as customer segmentation. So I will write here segmentation. Segmentation or clustering, whatever you call it. On the product side, using the same data, what I can do is association analysis. Okay, association analysis. On the transaction side, what I can do, I can do um, outlier or anomaly detection. Okay, anomaly. 
outlier or anomaly detection. So by looking at the data in the first glance only, I am able to find out three different use cases. Let's go here and think little more. So we have the customer data and we have the lifetime kind of entry for the customer. So let me see if one customer can have two different invoices basically. So for example, I can filter few customers and see that if they have duplicate invoices as well. So for example, this 347 customer, right? Does not have a duplicate invoice. 348 customer does not have a duplicate invoice. Yeah, 348 customer has a duplicate invoice. So if you see 348 customer, right? I will just filter on customer ending with 348. So you will see there are two different invoices for this guy. Okay, one is ending with 18 on the top. Other is ending with 998. Other is ending with 55. So multiple invoices for this customer on different different dates. So what we can do here, we can do another use case known as customer lifetime value because here we are getting customers detail on all the all the records of the customer throughout the lifetime. Okay. So what we can do here, basically, we can simply do one more use case known as CLTV standing for customer lifetime value. Okay. Then in product side, let's start thinking something more here on product side. What you can do, you can simply do some analysis based on what products is selling more. Okay. And on, on basis of that, right, you can do two different use cases. One is known as forecasting another is known as inventory management. Okay. So I will call here forecasting forecasting means what is the sale of a particular product that you can forecast for the future based on this sale. And then I will say inventory inventory management. Okay. These use cases you can do. What else comes to your mind in transaction side by looking at this data? For example, we can we can do something like invoice analysis. Okay. So invoice analysis. So this is a very simple data with just five, six columns, right? And I'm able to think some eight, nine use cases here. Okay. So the, the objective why I'm discussing this basically guys is you will not be a junior data scientist always, right? You will you will get promoted in the ladder and then you have to talk to stakeholders. When you go into those discussions, right? Then it is not like this is the work that you have to deliver. This is the task that you are given and you will do that task. No, it's not like that. You have to propose what can be done. So at the moment you see this data, right? Then you, you start thinking what can be done and then you propose. You propose based on these. Okay. Nowadays, you have to you have to combine your your knowledge with what is going on in the industry. You have to combine your knowledge with what is going on in the market. Okay. What is the latest trend and then talk about that. For example, if there is a scope of generative AI here, if there is a scope of generative AI here, you can simply say um, generative AI support for recommending product. Okay. So in the product category, it can be recommendation also. So we can write here recommendation engine. Okay. So in this recommendation, right, you can put some flavor of generative AI because that is a hot topic in the market. Okay. So only thing I'm trying to tell is all these things will help you in talking to stakeholders. They will understand that. Yes, you have some experience in the field. Okay. That is how you have to understand. Now use case. What I'm trying to show you now is a basically a segmentation model. I will build now and this segmentation model I will build on. I will derive a metric called RFM, which is a very, very common and very, very useful metric for all your retail use cases. Okay. So what does RFM stand for? So recency. Okay. F stands for frequency. Okay. And M stands for monetary. Okay. So what is the meaning of RFM recency frequency and monetary? What is the meaning of this is this data I will collect at customer level. Okay. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do a customer segmentation. So I will have three metric for all the customers R metric, F metric and M metric. And here I will have customer data. For example, customer one, for example, customer two. Okay. And I will have three numbers. What recency will tell me is how much time has passed since customer had made the last purchase? Okay. 
and i can i can give a baseline date of today or i can give a baseline date of some other date but basically how recent was the purchase that is recency frequency is how many times customer had missed the purchase and monetary is what is the dollar vol uh, value for the customer's total purchase okay if you combine all these three metric together right then you will start getting some very good group of customers or very good segments of customers that is what I will show you now in Python. So let me go to my Google Drive and I will try to show you what is RFM that I'm trying to do here, okay? So what I'm trying to do here is I'm importing pandas, I'm importing the same data and there are basically two tabs in the data. So I'm showing you one tab. 2009-10 is one tab, 10-11 is one tab. So here I'm taking um, out of these two tab, any one tab, for example, 9-10 I'm taking. I am dropping where customer is not, not present, okay? I am dropping where quantity is not greater than zero and price is not greater than zero. As I told you, I am calculating the monetary value by multiplying quantity and price, okay? So it's very simple. I go here and I multiply quantity and price and I get the total uh, dollar value, okay? Once I do that, right, my data will look something like this. So if you see here, I have a new column here total price and all these things remain same. So basically data is subsetted and for computing recency, I have taken my base date of 9, 12, 20, 11. So from this date, I will see the difference, okay? So if you see this data is all 2010, 2011, okay? So this data is basically all 2010, 2011 data. So from that time only, I have taken a base date. From this date, I will see the recency metric, okay? So this I have done. After that, if you see here, right? I am importing standard scalar. I am just calculating RFM metric here. P pay attention here, guys. Data dot group by customer ID dot ag. So at customer level, I want the data. Hence, aggregating at customer level. Okay. Recency metric, I am defining like this. Invoice date. Okay. Lambda function, I am defining. Reference date, I am defining here. Okay. And what I am doing here is I am taking max of that. So if you see here, what it will do basically, it will apply lambda on invoice date. So take maximum of that. Reference date, take the difference and give me number of days passed. So basically what it is telling is, when how many days have passed from this date, okay, when customer made the purchase. That is simple, recency. Frequency is basically how many invoices you have and monetary is basically sum of total price that we have computed here. These two are simple to understand, okay? So this becomes your RFM metric. Once you have RFM metric, right? Then you can apply something known as cut. Cut is basically what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to give, uh, you know, divide into bins basically, okay? So I'm saying divide into this and take my score. This is my R score, okay? Take my recency score and just give a Q cut to that, okay? So basically assigning scores from one to five for each RFM metric, okay? So it will assign one number. And then you have to tell me in comment why I need to do a standard scaling here. So I'm doing a standard scaling here. And then I have this RFM M metric. And in the bottom, if you see, right, I am just creating a R score, F score and M score here. So for all the customers, I have R score, F score and M score here. And after that, I'll do some simple, very simple stuff. So if you see, I'm just using K elbow. From the elbow curve, I will see how many how many clusters will be needed. Now again, some of you who is not aware of K means concept, guys, please go to YouTube and search unfold data science K means clustering, okay? Then you will know what is K means clustering. In detail, I have created a video on this, okay? So here you will come and you will see that three or four clusters are the clusters we can take, okay? And I have taken those number of clusters only in the code here. So if you see, I'm fitting a K-means model, okay? And number of cluster I'm taking as three. So once I fit the model right, what should happen is, if my metric reduction is right, if my assumption is right, then I should see the good, good division of customers because I have created RFM and RF and M metric. So division of customers should be good, right? And here I'm plotting that if you see here, I will just show you how the customers are divided here, okay? 
cluster zero is these guys black ones cluster one is these guys blue or green whatever you call it okay so if you see here right there is a clear cut clear cut division okay so for example from here to here these guys are first cluster okay from here to here these guys are first cluster and if you go from here to here right these guys are second okay and if you go all these yellow guys right these are third so if you see on the x axis and y axis i have r score and f score and from these two axis only i am able to you know get the right clusters so what i mean to say here is basically you no need to worry so much on retail data etc okay you just have to see what is making sense and how you can derive some useful metric okay based on those useful metric right you can very easily get your clusters or some meaningful suppose if i want to tell you can you give me let me delete this it is there okay so suppose i i tell you that guys can you give me a, a product recommendation metric for this what will be the metric that you will derive for product recommendation how you will go through the recommendation engine process and whatever use cases we have written here right so for example if i tell you what you will do for in inventory management what kind of data you will create what kind of data you will create for outlier detection okay so you should be able to think okay this is my data will look like this is my data at what level i will create data at this level i will create data what will be the metric i will be filling so i'll be filling metric 1 metric 2 metric 3 metric 4 and then what will be the pre processing i will do and what will be the main processing i will do right and then if you do it right you will obviously start seeing some meaningful patterns like like i am seeing here okay so that was the idea of this video guys i just wanted to let you know if you see retail data how to think about it how to think metric how to think possibilities and how to come to a conclusion okay I'll see you all in the next video guys wherever you are stay safe and take care